All right, we got my buddy Paul here. Awesome, Paul Siegert, healthcare expert, joining us now on the line, PCS Advisors. How are you, sir? Doing great. How are you, Leland? I'm good. I'm very concerned about this story that healthcare, um, or uh, pro- not providers, but I guess insurance companies are not paying for COVID treatment. Can you give me the, the lowdown on this? What's the background here? What's going on with this? And how are they able to do this when I sign up for healthcare, you know, through my employer or wherever, and that's the contract is if I get sick, you guys will cover me uh, after my deductible. How is this happening? Yeah, what we have going on is a situation where, and it's it's a really interesting story, yet another one that highlights the soulless nature of this industry. But we had, during the pandemic, insurers were looking down the barrel of the federal government coming in and saying, you have to cover the full cost of hospitalizations, as an example, for COVID, and there will be no out-of-pocket cost for consumers. And so when they saw that that was coming, in combination with the fact that they had they have these medical loss ratio rules that are part of the Affordable Care Act where they have to spend 85 cents for every dollar they get premium on a claim and give or give money back, and everybody was locked up at home and couldn't go to the doctor, they, were, they had money piling up on them that they were going to have to give back anyway. So they had those two kind of factors there and so they said hey let's let's do let's go out and say we're gonna waive people's out-of-pocket costs for COVID right they did so at, at the peak of that probably 88 percent of insur- insurers were waiving that cost for which is a generous now. thing so what you're saying then is yeah. if early on in the pandemic if I got COVID I wouldn't have even had to pay the copay that's right okay your max that's very pocket, generous your deductible yep so and it was smart smart move on their part because they had money that they were going to have to refund in any case. So then what happened next is, or and I think part of their calculus was if they did that voluntarily, they could also decide when to stop doing it. And they are by and large making that decision or already have because claims have returned to a normal level. They're not dealing with an excess of cash. So they're saying, hey, we're not going to indemnify you from your out-of-pocket costs anymore those are going to be on you so they're still right. paying they're paying for the stuff beyond your yeah so they're doing what they're supposed to do and what we agreed to do they just stopped doing the charity thing you got it right yep um got it. here's the weird thing about this is like um how do because because i, I want to kind of segue this in because that to, to me like the headline was a lot worse than the actual story there you're like okay well that was very generous of them to do that for a while and like you said it's kind of waning now in the sense that so many people have had covid or gotten the shot that it's yeah. not as yeah. much of a pressing issue so you know good on them for doing that for a little while but i guess the other side of this is that uh, w- that I'm really concerned about is is the direction we're going with employers um, following you know Biden's orders, basically saying we're gonna we're gonna jettison these people. And so you have, and, and I posted this on Twitter yesterday, Paul. And we're talking with Paul Seeger, um, healthcare expert. Um, I posted. I said, hey, look, I'll make you a deal, okay? For all of you nanny staters, um, you know, people that want to force other people to do things, I'll make you a deal. Let's make the big pharma companies liable for any negative effects of the vaccine, and then we can do a vaccine mandate. But until then, I shouldn't have to be, because now we're, you know, there was a a federal, um, the federal government basically sent out a thing to federal departments saying, hey, get ready, there's going to be some adverse effect payouts here, here's how you handle it. I don't know if you saw that story or not. Um, And it's not, again, not saying that there's a huge number of adverse effects, but just that there's going to be some and there's a court set up in the government and the government's supposed to pay out in those cases when there is an adverse effect and so on and so forth. But as long as there is any risk at all to an individual, I feel like that there should not be the possibility of a mandate. That's a really interesting perspective, and it's getting no airtime at all. And there is plenty of evidence to say there are adverse reactions. One in 60,000 people have a very serious one, according to VAERS. Uh, so it, it does happen. Mm-hmm. And certain age groups and certain you know types of people have more reactions than others. And it's it, another part of this story that's really interesting to me, I don't know if you saw Oxner Health in Louisiana. They have gone so far as to say not only are we doing a mandate, we are going to fine you if your spouse is unvaccinated. How is that? So how is that legal? Say, <laughs> well, because they're saying it's not a mandate. 
I'm sure it'll, you know, there's going to be some, some wrangling, legal wrangling around this, but there, you have an extra hundred dollar payroll deduction if your spouse is unvaccinated. Yeah, it's insane. It's insane. Yeah, I mean, what an overreach. I've never. This, you know who's going to make really good money and have a really great Christmas? Level. You know who's going to make really good money and have a really great Christmas this year and next year? Lawyers. Oh yeah, they always win. <laughs> they always win. <laughs> they're they're going to make a lot of money and they're going to have a really good Christmas, even if they can't buy anything because of the uh, supply shortages. But they're going to have a bunch of money in the bank to buy it when it finally That's does right. get there. That's right. Um, yeah. yeah, that I don't I don't even understand how that could be legal. How because I've heard of situations like that where okay, we're going to fine you um, if your uh, if your husband doesn't get you know the vaccine, we're going to fine you. And um, I don't know how that's even possible. I don't know how that's legal. Well, what they're falling back on is they're saying, hey, you can go get health care somewhere else. You don't have to get it here. Yeah. So so I think they're getting away with it based on those grounds. What's really interesting to me in the story is they used as justification the fact that in their health plan, they've spent nine million dollars to provide health care to people with covid Right. And so they've got to get everybody vaccinated on their health plan, blah, 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 blah. Well, yeah. if you look at their, if you look at their financials, on average, they were, it's a nonprofit, so it's not necessarily technically profits, but basically their profits at the end of the last couple of years prior to COVID were around right. $70 million. Their profits at the end of this past year with COVID were over $600 million. Jeez. And their claim is that their $9 million of COVID healthcare costs are the reason wow. for this mandate. That's <laughs> insane. That is insane. Paul Seeger, PCS Advisors, healthcare expert. Thanks so much for your time, man. We appreciate you weighing in on some of these things people are very concerned about. We appreciate it.